Um, why is it that, and it's assumption that the flood created most of the deaths of the dinosaurs, yes. correct? Why is there massive amounts of dinosaur bone, bones found, but not massive amounts of human bones? All right, very good question. Uh, dinosaur bones are described in Job chapter 40. The question for the sake of the camera, the question was, we find massive graveyards of dinosaur bones, and we have at our uh, private site in Colorado where we excavate. Uh, we have massive, they're, they're all thrown together as if they were washed in a flood, a log jam in a flood, and, and they were. Well, how extensive was that flood? Well, those layers run for 11 states and into Canada, pretty good sized flood. Yeah, like a worldwide flood. Uh, so anyhow, the question was, why do we have these massive amounts of dinosaur bones, but very few, very few human bones fossilized in the rocks? Okay, Job chapter 40 describes behemoth, the dinosaur that uh, Dr. Judkins lectured on earlier here. The dinosaur, and it says his bones are like uh, bronze or brass, and like bars of iron. I've had the privilege, the team and I have had the privilege of discovering 20 different dinosaurs and three pterodactyls. Every last dinosaur bone is extremely dense and extremely heavy, extremely so. So in a flood, once they were overcome, they would automatically sink and be caught in the sedimentary deposit that was going on. Sedimentary rocks, sedimentary rocks are formed as mud is moved about in water and then the water is drained off. Same is true of the spring floods around here, the spring floods up in Illinois, and, and et cetera, et cetera. Mud is moved, chemistry is moved about, then the water is drained off. Well, the Bible describes not only the flood and its deposits, but the draining process as well. Wow. Okay, so dinosaur bones are found on every continent, even in the Arctic and Antarctic. Dinosaur bones are found. Why not human bones? Mammalian bones, and man is the most sophisticated of the mammals. Mammalian bones are not nearly as dense, number one. And the chemistry of their body is that when they die by drowning, the gases cause them to bloat and float. Even if they're underwater, they, in a matter of hours, they even work their way through mud. Unfortunately, out here long years ago, a young girl who was a Christian girl, a private Christian school, they had come for their graduation outing. The whole school came, most of the school, maybe 30 or 40 kids. Two of the boys got in trouble in the water. And this wonderful Christian girl who had just graduated swam in to help them. She got the boys out, but as she was getting the last boy, the current is very swift over there. It is now, uh, the state has widened the channel and it's not the same problem, but it was extremely swift in that area. It caught her, took her under, and it swept her downstream. It took them two weeks to find her body because it was submerged in debris. And by the way, in the process of finding it, one, they called in the local, uh, the counties, counties nearby, all the way up to Fort Worth, the uh, rangers, uh, and uh, one of them lost his life trying to find her. It was a terrible tragedy. Two weeks later, her body surfaced downstream in the Paluxy because it had, as would be the case, bloated and then floated exposed to air, to bacteria, to scavengers, uh, all sorts of, you know, uh, they're supposed to be devoured, not just lying around. I if evolution were true, there, there are statistics to show that with the increase 
of the human population. The growth, there is a science of growth statistics. Professor John Hefner is a specialist at this. The science of growth statistics. If you start over with eight people 4,500 years ago, the growth statistics show that you have about 7 billion people. Well, that's what we have, 7.6 billion people. How'd you get the other 0.6? Well, some of them are on steroids. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so that's, that's scientific. That matches the creation model and the biblical model. But then if you take that, those same statistics of growth and just go back 40,000 years ago. 40,000 years ago, according to evolution, Homo sapien was already dancing all over the place. But with the growth statistics, starting with just a couple, 40,000 years ago, the bodies would be 10 to the 40,000th power. Did you compute that? Now, this is in the literature. I'm not just pulling numbers out of the hat. There's not enough space in the known universe to contain that many bodies. Evolution is bankrupt, and you have to have a poster child and prop her up and send her to a Cairo to work on her hips and, <laughs> and then cut them all up. So, uh, scavengers, bacteria, a design so that the system, uh, I guess case in point out west, some years ago, uh, two ranchers went, or a couple of scout boys went to the far backside of a distant, distant ranch. They told me about it. We were out in, the, in that area. And these boys broke open a door that had been shut for a long time. And there was the old conjurer just sitting there Nothing but his skeleton. Bacteria and the birds flying in and everything had eaten everything off. Justice. So the answer is, I think that answer is correct. There, there are a few, uh, a few remnants that we find, but it's against grain. A few remnants we find of mammals and man especially. Good question.